How's it going everyone? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these comic book cabinets. Alright, so you're going to need yourself a couple of things. You're going to need a short box. You're also going to need something to write with and something to cut with. Scissors, a box cutter, X-Acto knife. You're also going to need some duct tape and Velcro if you want to get super fancy and want this to be a little bit more dynamic. You're also gonna need a legal size filing cabinet. And I gotta say, you can find these pretty cheap on Facebook. I think the ones that you see in today's video, I bought each of those for like 30 bucks. So if you need something like this, go check Facebook or Craigslist, whatever you feel more comfortable with. All right, so phase one here, we're basically gonna take that short box and we're just gonna split it right down the seams. Now that you've got that split, you're gonna wanna cut off these bottom halves here. So the bottom halves are kind of the pieces that you would typically like tuck in to actually form the box. You're not gonna really need those for the, the piece itself inside of the filing cabinet, but you may wanna use them later uh, just to do some kind of like lining up. So hold on to them if you're gonna use them to measure later. You're also gonna wanna maybe bend these a little bit. I found that it kind of helped me cut those whenever I went to actually remove them. All right, now that you've got these ready to cut, go ahead and remove the bottom pieces there. And basically, once you've removed both bottom pieces there, you're also probably going to want to remove that little flap that actually puts the box together or keeps the box together. Uh, I find that to be a little unnecessary in this build. Once you've removed that, you're going to want to take the leftover piece and fold it right where I've kind of showed you here. Um, it should be fairly obvious. Just fold that box, get it uh, kind of creased over a few times, just like you did the bottom pieces. It definitely makes it a little bit easier to remove. Uh, and then once you've got these two pieces, it's going to kind of lay out the skeleton inside the actual uh, drawer itself. So this will be where you basically keep your comics on either side, which I'll be showing you here shortly. So take your knife and just cut right down that little edge that you've been creasing. And then uh, basically from here, I kind of like to line these up and just sort of even them out. Uh, make sure that they're basically the same exact size. I just quickly use the little hand holes there uh, in order to kind of size them up. If you've got one of the back pieces in your drawer, it's actually going to make it really easy to move these two pieces back and forth and actually create kind of a dynamic drawer in case you need something closer to a small box or something closer to a long box once you get more comics. But basically for now, what we've got to do is kind of shear down this cardboard box to get it to fit inside the drawer and allow you to close it. Now, I found the easiest way to do this was to basically line these up in the drawer as if I was going to install them and then slowly close the drawer until they keep me from closing it where the box is effectively meet then you're going to want to take like a pen or a pencil and mark where this meets the drawer and you're going to effectively cut the entire board right kind of where you've got that are right below it uh, and you're going to want to flip these around and just measure on both sides Now, once you've got both of your cardboard pieces measured, you're gonna go back to your cutting area, and here is where I used uh, one of the pieces I removed earlier, just sort of lined it up uh, on the straight edge here on the side of the box. That way I could basically just get a straight line across. Uh, nothing too fancy here. I know there's plenty of ways to do this a little bit better, but just in a pinch, you've got everything you really needed. From here, you're basically just going to mark where you need to cut, and then you'll take your scissors or your box cutter and just cut right down that line. And then I just take them and kind of loosely fit them back into the drawer to make sure that I can close the drawer with no problems. And if they close with no issues, you should be good to go to the next step. Now, from here, you've kind of got two options. Uh, if you want to go a very static route and keep this to basically be one piece that you can't move back and forth, Basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is take some sort of a duct tape or some kind of a thicker tape, and you're gonna to wanna to line this up so that way you see exactly where they basically meet at the end there, mark that, and then you're gonna to wanna to tape over those edges around the box, and then I would also recommend maybe taping across the top all the way so it's kind of just one complete structure. Definitely helps keep all of that in there. Now if you wanna make this just a little bit more dynamic, like I mentioned earlier, and have the ability to move that back piece forward to kind of make a smaller space, you can take some Velcro, it's gonna be your best friend here basically just line up two strips on one side of the box pull the tape off of both ends slam them together and now you've got a nice little structure that you can use to basically line your comics on either side 
So you can see here, I've actually already got a piece of Velcro lined up against the end of the drawer. And I basically take that piece of cardboard and just line it up against it. And as you can see, I basically take uh, another piece of Velcro there and put it on the back panel and then line the cardboard up with that. And once you've got this put together, it's really easy to actually just unhinge that Velcro there. And you can slide that back piece backwards and forwards. And now you've got either a longer drawer or a shorter drawer depending on how many comics you need to fit into that drawer. And then if you've got it completely collapsed and you still have room on either side, typically what I'll do is add some like bubble wrap or some wrapping paper or something that's just easy going, soft, that's not going to damage your books. Put those in there and you should be good to go. Uh, but now that you've seen one solution, I'd be interested in knowing how do you organize your comics? Do you have a bunch of long boxes? Uh, please, God, don't tell me you're stacking them. Uh, that's what kept me from the 9.8 on that Green Lantern that you see up in the filing cabinet back there uh, or up in the bookcase back there. Uh, that's a 9.2 and all, it's all because of that light stacking bin from where someone just had it stacked for however long uh, so don't do that with your comics come up with a cool system like this use long boxes or short boxes uh, if you can definitely just try to stay away from stacking your comics uh, but if you found this video useful please leave me a like or a subscribe comment let me know hey I actually built this out and it works great uh, or let me know if you ran into any issues I'd, I'd be interested in knowing if you've done something like this before and implemented it with a different system you know is there something I can improve in my own organization I'd love to hear from you. So like I said, give me a like, subscribe, comment. I've got some more videos coming down the line. I'm working on an Escape from Wyoming review number one for the first issue since I did issue two recently for the Bad Idea Challenge. I'm also going to continue working on my Werewolf by Night. I'm trying to really get that one down and make it look super good for you. So I'm really, really excited to get that out, hopefully here in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, this has been Adam, aka The Real Simzo, and I'll see you next time.